What's up, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Very Japanese Games, a game series where I review games only released in Japan. So today, because it's close to Halloween, I'm in kind of a horror mood, and I'm going to be talking about one of my favorite horror games, and that is this one right here, the original Clock Tower. First, let's get something out of the way. I know when I said Clock Tower, you're thinking, Hey, I played Clock Tower on the PlayStation. That's not a Japanese-only game. However, unless you imported it for the Super Famicom or the PlayStation, you didn't. The US release Clock Tower is actually the Japanese Clock Tower 2. After that, the US Clock Tower 2 is actually a Clock Tower side story called Clock Tower Ghost Head in Japan. And the third game on the PS2, the numbering, finally catches up, and I guess that's a good thing, except that's the last Clock Tower game in the series, unless you consider Haunting Ground also on the PS2 part of the series. So let's get into the original Clock Tower. It was originally released in 1995 for the Super Famicom, and also in 1997 on the PS1 with a few added cutscenes by Human Entertainment. It is a 2D point-click horror game that has a reputation for being the scariest game on the Super Famicom. I don't want to ruin the story for you too much, but you start as Jennifer Simpson and you've been adopted with three of your friends by the Barrows family who live in the clock tower. When you arrive, things go almost immediately bad. Horror ensues. The game itself is quite difficult. If you know what you're doing, you can probably finish the game in about 40 minutes or so, However, without a walkthrough, expect to die a lot as you figure out where the enemies are hiding and what you're supposed to be doing. The first time I played the game, I made it about five minutes before I was killed by a parrot screaming something at me. I'm still not sure what it says. I see you, I kill you, or my personal favorite, I shiteru, which is uh, Japanese for I love you. It's probably not that, but to be killed by a parrot screeching I love you is somehow more disturbing to me. Anyway, take a listen. The main villain for this game is the Scissor Man. He's relatively slow moving, but if he gets close enough, it's almost automatic death. So, you don't want to fight the Scissor Man when he shows up, you run away or you hide. It's pretty effective at making you panic when he shows up. Most of the game involves solving puzzles while avoiding the scissor man at all costs. There are a lot of great shocks and surprises in the story as well, and it's scary throughout the game. Fans of horror may recognize the influence of Dario Argento on this game. Story and even the appearance of the main character are hugely influenced by the Argento movie phenomenon. Take a look at this poster of the movie and at the screenshot of Jennifer here from Clock Tower. Also, there's a death scene in the beginning of the game that you might run into that's very similar to one found in the Argento movie Suspiria. Check it out! Though I mentioned that the game is relatively short once you know what to do, there are around 12 different endings to this game, each being varying levels of bad to somewhat good. Uh, at least half of your friends are going to die even if you get the best ending, so I don't really say there is a really good ending at all. Overall, Clock Tower is a classic horror adventure. Of course, this was only released in Japan, so if you want to play an original copy, your only option is to import it. 
However, if you don't mind emulators and you don't mind missing out on a few cutscenes, there is an English patch version of the Super Famicom version floating around if you search for it. So that ends another episode of Very Japanese Games. Uh, I hope I was able to introduce you to another overlooked game released only in Japan. So until next time, keep on playing great games, no matter where you live.